The Nazis wasted no time in stripping away the civil and human rights of Jews and anyone who dared to question their authority. But the Nazis' madness didn't stop there. They also targeted homosexuals, branding them as perverse and a threat to the master race. They hunted down thousands of lesbians and subjected them to brutal beatings, rapes, and murders, all because of who they loved. Can you even fathom that? Persecuted for simply being yourself. But let me tell you, if you get to know what Nazis really did to lesbians, you just can't sleep peacefully tonight. Stay tuned till the end of the video to understand the real Nazi horror. With that said, let's start. Before the Nazis came to power, Germany was a place of transformation and freedom. People were breaking free from traditional gender and sexual norms. Lesbian communities thrived, with social clubs and associations popping up all over the place. But the Nazis saw these communities as a symbol of decay and used their power to suppress them. Magnus Hirschfeld, a physician and sex researcher, fought for the rights of the LGBTQ community. He believed that homosexuality was inborn and not a vice or perversion. But many Germans saw his ideas as immoral and dangerous. The Nazis in particular were fiercely opposed to homosexuality and used their power to crush it. It all started with one man's hateful words. Wilhelm Frick, a Nazi member of the Reichstag, declared that any man engaging in unnatural lechery with another man must be punished with utmost severity. He claimed that such vices would lead to the disintegration of the German people. But he couldn't have predicted the horrors that would follow, the torture and slaughter of thousands of innocent people, all because of their sexuality. It was when Adolf Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in 1933 that things turned for the worse for the LGBTQ community. The new regime subjected them to intense scrutiny and persecution. Men who were suspected of homosexuality were relentlessly persecuted throughout the 1930s. The Nazis went as far as raiding and shutting down gay and lesbian meeting places and organizations. They even closed down newspapers and journals that catered to the LGBTQ community, making it nearly impossible for them to connect with each other. The Nazis even introduced castration as a legal practice that was mandatory for certain male offenders. In 1935, they reformed Paragraph 175, which criminalized any sexual intimacy between men. Even non-consensual and coercive acts between men could land them up to 10 years of hard labor in prison. Judges were often instructed to hand down harsh sentences, and prosecutors didn't hesitate to argue for the harshest punishment possible. And it didn't stop there. SS leader Heinrich Himmler led the charge in persecuting male homosexuality calling it a public scourge. In 1936, he created the Reich Central Office for the Combating of Homosexuality and Abortion. This office was responsible for tracking down men suspected of homosexuality, and even some lesbians were investigated and interrogated. But here's the real kicker. The Nazis didn't outlaw sexual relations between women. They saw lesbians as first and foremost women. In their eyes, German women had one job, to be mothers, so lesbians were expected to do just that and give birth to racially pure Germans, the so-called Aryans. Can you believe it? These women were viewed as nothing more than baby-making machines. But don't be fooled, life was far from easy for lesbians under the Nazi regime. They couldn't continue living and socializing as they had before. Instead, they were deemed social outcasts who didn't fit in the mainstream and that made them targets for the Nazi regime. Aryan lesbians were forced to hide their true selves and conform to society's narrow-minded expectations. But even that wasn't enough to protect them from the wrath of the Nazis. Lesbians were targeted, accused of deviant sexual behavior, and subjected to the most horrific treatment. Elie Smula and Marguerite Rosenberg were accused of having sexual relations with their female colleagues and the Gestapo used that as a pretext to arrest them for subversion. Their fate was to be deported to the Ravensbrück concentration camp, where they were registered as political prisoners. But in their camp documentation, there was a notation that simply said, lesbian. That one word proved to be a death sentence for Smula. Can you imagine the horrors that these women faced? Forced to wear a pink triangle badge on their camp uniforms, they were subjected to abuse, humiliation, forced labor, and even forced castration. Sexual encounters took place between prisoners in the camps, ranging from consensual intimacies to prostitution. The female prisoners, including lesbians, were even raped. 
It's hard to fathom the level of violence and degradation that they were subjected to. Even same-sex relationships between women in the camps did not always fit neatly into the category of lesbianism. Some relationships were born out of necessity rather than love. And yet, lesbians were often treated as outsiders in the camps, shunned and left isolated and powerless within the prisoner hierarchy. To this day, it remains a research challenge to find historical sources related to lesbian experiences under the Nazi regime. Very few lesbians shared testimonies about their experiences during this time, partly because the topic of sexual relations between women remained taboo for decades after the Nazi era. It's a tragedy that their stories have been silenced for so long. And this brings us to the end of the video. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. See you in the next one. Until then, peace.